Indians have grown used to the omnipresence of their prime minister. He's on billboards, he's in the papers, both in ads and in the news. TV channels seem to have little else to cover. And on March 16th, the very day the dates for India's elections were announced, Narendra Modi was WhatsApping the country. A letter from the Prime Minister was delivered straight into the phones of hundreds of millions of Indians. Mere pyare parivar jai. The transformation that has taken place in the lives of people is the biggest achievement of our government over the last 10 years. It is your support that gives me immense strength. I am confident that we will continue to take our nation to great heights together. It was unvarnished electioneering by the ruling party using the resources and access to phone number databases of the government. And it was unsurprising, it was all happening on WhatsApp. Technology is very much part of the arsenal which the BJP of Prime Minister Narendra Modi uses. I think the BJP understood before any other party, every Indian may not have uh, literacy and public health and so on and so forth, but they have their cell phones. India has the cheapest data in the world. So the BJP in areas where it wishes to contest seriously, it develops messaging for each constituency. That was something that Prime Minister Modi and the Bharatiya Janata Party understood very well. Mr. Amit Shah, who is actually virtually the number two to Mr. Modi in the, within the BJP, few years ago, while speaking to uh, party workers, he had actually boasted, you know, it is very easy for us to take the message because we have the largest WhatsApp network in the country. WhatsApp is not the now that was not a boast, that is actually true. You actually have a centralized cell within the BJP which actually in the morning it decides, okay, these are today's messages which are to be publicized. And they're kind of broadcast to various parts of the country. The BJP's messaging is carefully tailored and highly produced, with the party's star campaigner front and centre in virtually all of it. The Modi motorcade drives through throngs of cheering Indians. The videos from that make it to WhatsApp groups, YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. The Prime Minister hangs out with kids in schools and presents 20-something social media influencers with awards from the government. He prays at multiple temples with cameras in tow, even if the holy site is underwater. Those clips don't just stay on social media, they make the evening news bulletins. Look closely on his screens. He even decided to go underwater to pray at the submerged Dwarka. All this is part of media strategy, creating a nationwide perception that Narendra Modi, as the leader of this ruling party, wants to take India forward, wants to create a developed India and make it the third largest economy in the world. One senior leader of the BJP had said about Mr. Modi, he said, for Narendra Modi, elections is a battle of images. And that is what the Indian Prime Minister has shown himself to be very good at. And you can agree with his ideology, his policies or disagree. But it is his skills at political marketing that have been noticed. We must remember that in India, Democracy works in different uh, language zones. So the question is, how do you recognize a party? Modi Sarkar. Electoral symbols are important. In the case of Prime Minister Modi, it is the recognition value of the Modi name, the Modi face. He has different personas that he has presented to the public. One is that of a term called Vishwa Guru, which means world leader. His performance on the international stage, it's constantly projected back home. The other aspect of the messaging is that of being a strong, unapologetic Hindu who goes and leads ceremonies in temples. All 
almost performs like a head priest. Some of his party people have likened him to a godlike figure. The messaging is extremely comprehensive, which is, according to data, the most expensive in India's history. The BJP's finances are formidable. The party is the wealthiest in India. Its funds boosted by a financial tool it launched in 2017 called an electoral bond. This powerful instrument ushered in a wave of political donations to numerous parties across India. The bulk of the money, however, nearly 60%, went to the BJP, amounting to about 60 billion rupees, more than $725 million, earned between 2017 and just two months ago, February 2024, when the Supreme Court declared electoral bonds illegal due to their lack of transparency. The money is in the BJP's coffers, though, and it powers not just an incessant stream of PR, but also an impressive organizational behemoth that underpins the party's election strategy. On paper, today the BJP is the largest political party in the world. It is larger than the Communist Party of China. Bharat Mata Ke. So there is a huge network of party volunteers who are spread across the country. Besides that, it's very important to understand that the BJP is not a standalone organization, but it is part of a fairly large ideological umbrella group, the Sangha Parivar. It's an organization which was formed in 1925, almost 100 years ago. And everywhere they have a presence. So during elections, it is not just the BJP which is out campaigning, but you have leaders and cadre which fan out to virtually every village and every electoral booth in the country. So I think the door-to-door -door campaigning uh, is a very effective method. You know, each page of the uh, electoral rolls is assigned to one person. So that person goes, you know, to the visits the families to try and con to find out have they benefited from the policies and the programs of the party. If not, why not? It is a party that's driven with a will to power, and therefore every tool becomes very important for them. Now that, the problem with the opposition is they don't have that kind of a will. The opposition's problems extend far beyond a supposed shortage of will. Over the past decade, India's numerous non-BJP or non-BJP allied parties have come under serious pressure. Corruption has been a powerful line of attack from the Modi government. It has enabled a relentless hounding of opposition leaders on a range of cases. Some credible, others less so. Itne gotale kiye hai ke apne aap mein corruption Olympic ka khel aayojit ho jaye. The result has been numerous politicians in jail, a deep reputational hit for opposition parties, and a strong incentive for those not keen to see the inside of a prison cell to simply switch sides to the BJP and breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> The other query we must ask is the playing field now a level playing field for the BJP and the opposition. And we must, as journalists, it's our job to flag that. Yet, for all the many problems that the opposition faces, they are going to put up candidates and fight the BJP. But the BJP is working on a very, very simple tack that they, part of the messaging right now is to say there is no alternative to us. That is all part of the hype Modi versus who, you know, that Modi is the only answer to India. Thanks for watching. Now hit that like button and leave us a comment to let us know what you think about anything that we covered this week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Does anyone really call it X? Facebook and Instagram for updates from the show. Links are in the description.